Hello Internet! Today we're going to be taking a look at uh, Unity's uh, Mixed Reality uh, XR input system, which allows you to use Vive controllers or Oculus controllers or, or your Daydream uh, Android phone to do input stuff without using Unity's leg legacy inputs. Um, so right now we have this Asteroids VR system and it's using the legacy input system in order to do a lot of that stuff. Um, so to give you an idea, it looks like this, which is the code itself looks fine right right now. Uh, just the, <laughs> the whole way this is set up is gross and I don't like it at all. Um, because the way this is working is if we go into our project settings and our input, we have this left hand trigger set up to the ninth axis on our joystick, which has to match to some magic value in Unity um, in order to make this whole thing work. And so I want to be able to delete both of these entries and use this uh, mixed reality input system as sort of a, a in-place replacement for that. Uh, and so I'm going to be kind of relying on their examples, but we're going to be kind of building back up from what we have. Um, just to give you an example of what where we are right now, um, just because uh, hopefully this works all right. Uh, but so this is Asteroids VR, uh, and I've modified it a little bit since the stream. Uh, there's a little bit of new graphics, and you can see the controllers have a trail on them um, and a little effect. But uh, what happens when I pull this trigger is we start accelerating in the direction the controller is facing. Um, and so this lets me kind of fly around in space. Uh, and so what we want to do is map this trigger button to that velocity. Uh, and so that's already really happening. Um, the way this input system works in our game is we have this player flight settings object, which is a data model that just stores information about the state of the thrusters. Um, so we have the strength and then the vector forward, which is the up vector. That's the vector along this controller. Uh, and so then pulling this trigger increases the strength. Um, and so that's just using uh, the basic axes uh, from Unity. And so hopefully we can just modify this to, to do what we want. Um, and so I think this is relatively straightforward. I'm going to guess here and go unity engine.xr. input devices. git devices. So there's a few things we need to do in order to make this whole thing work. Um, we need to git devices, git devices at node, or git devices. I believe the node is what is actually connected to our controllers, so we might want to use that. Um, but I'm just going to do git devices for now. And what it expects is a list of devices, not a list that we have filled with all the devices that would kind of defeat the purpose of this. Um, instead, we are going to want, I think, three devices here. We are going to want all of the devices, and then we're going to want our left and our right hand. Um, so this is going to be a list of, what is this expecting? Unity, Unity engine.xr.input device. Uh, so Unity engine.xr. Er, input device. And I think we can we can kind of cut out a lot of this extra code here and just use input device here and add a using statement so just to make everything a bit shorter, which means this is now that. Um, so just input devices .git devices, And we want to plug in all of our devices here. I'm going to initialize this right away as a list of these. Um, that's weird. Why do they? I, I, I won't nitpick, but for some reason, it's expecting a list of devices. Or, 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 or a specific list. Um, not, it's not using an interface. It's actually using the list implementation, which means all, we have to use an array list when we're doing this. Um, 
maybe there's some reason for that, but that's kind of weird for me. Um, so once we've done this, what should happen is we should have a list of all devices connected at this time. And so we should be able to actually use some of them. Uh, right, right now, I'm not actually going to do anything with that. I'm just going to do debug.log um, all devices dot count. Uh, and we're just going to say total devices connected is equal to this. Um, and just kind of log this out just so we know what's connected. This should detect um, six things I'm thinking. Um, you can see I have the Steam overlay or Steam VR overlay in the bottom right here. That Those are the devices connected. I have a game controller and then two controls, uh, two tracking stations, and then my headset. Uh, and so this should pick up all of those. And I imagine it might pick up more than six. And the reason for that could be that um, could be that it's picking up different eyes, for example. So the left and right eye might be considered different devices. I'm not entirely sure, but this should give us at least some some perspective on that. And then we can kind of base our our next step on that. Um, so I'm going to stop it here and let it re recompile, and then we can restart this, and we should start seeing a whole bunch of log messages. Um, so if we open up our console now hit play, we should hopefully get five devices connected. Um, I am assuming that's left, right eye, the two controllers and the gamepad. That's my assumption. Uh, it doesn't particularly matter um, what devices are there. That's not really why we're doing this. What we're trying to do is get a left and right hand. Uh, so we should be able to now search through all of these. Um, and so let's see how they're doing it. I have their their thing pulled up over here. Uh, and I believe they're searching get devices with roll. Okay. I think we can do this a little bit better then. Get devices with roll. So we can get an input device roll and plug that in. And then this will return all of them with a roll. Can I do get device with roll? No. Okay. Um, so this can be all of our controllers. Is that what we want? Um, so what this is expecting is a input device role. Dot game controller, left hand, right handed. Okay. Can these be, can these overlap? Because I assume what we want is a left handed I think we want left-handed and right-handed. I think those are the two things we want. Um, game controller, I'm assuming, is like like this, like one of these. Um, that's what it. That's what Steam VR is detecting. So I'm assuming that's what that is. Hardware trackers are actually the actual like Vive tracking pucks or similar things like that. Um, we're not using those right now, so we don't need to worry about that. Um, so let's get all the left-handed devices. Um. What are we going to do? Uh, this needs to go into some some other list. Um, so let's do this left-handed. Left-hand devices. Sure. And we can re actually replace that all devices um, with the left-handed devices and call this the left-handed devices. And if we run this again, I'm assuming we're just going to get one thing. Uh, and in, if that's the case, we can just pull off the first thing and then use that as our left-handed strength. Otherwise, we can actually zero. OK. And it's, oh, got it. So it actually goes to zero. Um, if I put these under my table, for example, we should see that stop tracking or not. Uh, you can see the numbers there are still going up. I can't actually point at anything because my hands are under the desk. Um, but uh, I was expecting that counting number next to our total devices connected to actually stop counting and for the zero number to keep counting. 
but it looks like once a device is detected in by Unity, when you start it, it stays detected. Um, and I'm not sure why that might be, but that's kind of weird. Either way, that gives us a really handy thing because what this allows us to do is say there's only one device, if there's one device, do things for the left hand. And then if there's only one device for the right hand, do things for the right hand. Um, we could come back to this later and maybe optimize this so we're not duplicating this code because we actually have the same thing uh, for the left and right hand duplicated e almost exactly. And that's probably not great, but for the amount of code we're writing, duplicating it honestly isn't that big of a deal. So we're, we're not going to be super concerned about that. Uh, so that is going to update our input devices. And then let's split this up. So if, or should we do a four? Nah. Um, if left hand devices dot first or dot length count is greater than or equal to one, then for the first, we're going to always assume the first is the correct one to use. So if you have two left hands for some reason, like your Goro from Street Fighter, or not Street Fighter, from Mortal Kombat, um, then you guess you have two left hands. Um, we're, we're not, at least in this super naive implementation, we're not really going to worry about that. We'll, we'll deal with that later. Um, but this should allow us to detect when the controller actually comes into visibility with the tracking stations, and then actually do things with that. And so what I'm hoping is that now that we're at this point, we can actually use something to pull out those inputs. Um, because right now we're actually, we haven't actually changed anything except made it slower, uh, do these polls every frame and then never, never actually really use them. Um, so let's, let's actually do something with them. So what we need to do is replace this and the way Unity does this, there's a documentation for this somewhere. Um, here we go. <laughs> it's kind of gross. It looks like this. Uh, so it'd be left hand devices dot, or we'll just do zero to get the first, and then do try get feature value. Uh, and so this is going to be our input feature usage of type float. How does this work? Input feature, common usages. There we go. Common usages dot uh, trigger. And so what we want to test is the trigger value because that's what we're, what, that's what we're tracking. Um, there's also a trigger button, which I believe is, there's a little click when you fit, uh, fully uh, pull the trigger. That is the trigger button, as far as I'm aware. Uh, and so this has an output value. If you've ever used like the Raycasts or things like that, there's outputs. This does the same thing, but it outputs the actual value that it got. Uh, and so let's try that. Let's do value um, force there. And we can do an if here. Because this is actually trying to do thing, uh, do something, what it's going to do is return false if it doesn't work. Uh, and so what we can do is do something like that. Uh, and we'll just store our force somewhere down here, float force. And that is actually going to try to pull out the force. If it can't for whatever, maybe that uh, input we found doesn't actually have a trigger for whatever reason. Maybe it's detecting something else. And it just isn't supported. Like uh, on Daydream, I believe there is no triggers because it's just your it's just your phone. Uh, in that case, this wouldn't work. Uh, and so what we need is something to actually kind of opt out and say, "Whoa, let's not do that yet." Uh, so hopefully that catches that. And then we can go here, do the same thing. We can reuse that force value, and also grab the right hand devices, plug that in. And then do that. And then we just need to plug in a force. So we're actually plugging in the force for both of these now instead, oh, not plugging them in for both of them. We're 
short there. There we go. So we're using the force that we read out and then we overwrite the force again and then try to reuse it. Uh, and I believe that should be good. Uh, I will double check before this video goes live to make sure I haven't like totally overlooked something that is obvious and like a pattern that I shouldn't be doing and we'll, we'll let you know, but I think we're good. And so we should still be able to move. If we can't move, this broke. That's, that's our test. Uh, so if we do this, we can still fly around. Everything's good. And I think, oh, we got hit. <laughs> so, uh, well, I think, I think we're done because we got smashed. Uh, but it did work. So that's good. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I was out of the blue. Um, so I think that's, that's pretty much it for, for doing this. There are better ways to, to do this. I, I, I know that. Um, like a lot of this project code, um, what, what I'm trying to do is kind of iterate towards better solutions, but not start with the best solution. Um, because if starting with the best solution takes a long time and you don't always know what the best solution is when you're starting. Um, and so with this project, I'm kind of trying to start with, let's get something working. Let's get the game to a playable state. And then if it's too slow or it doesn't support certain things, or we're using some really clunky input method and we want to change it to something newer, uh, we can do that a little bit more easily. And so that's sort of what I'm, what I'm trying to grab here. I don't know if it totally works, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we're getting close enough. Um, and it seems like both of these seem to work. So I think we're good. Um, at least that's, that's where I'm, um, so I will, I will leave it here. If there's any comments or you have any other suggestions, this, this entire usage was actually a suggestion from a comment on the live stream we had. Um, so if you, if you have comments and you think there's ways we can improve this or new things we should try, let me know and I will definitely, definitely take a look. But that's it for this video. So until next time, see you, internet. All right. I, I've done a little bit a little bit more reading and it looks like we can actually t tweak this a little bit to make it make it quite a bit better or or better than than it is right now um so get devices with role at uh or not with role but at xr node um so these might be a better better use case because what we can actually do is do an input or not input device uh the xr node dot left hand instead uh, and so by doing this, we can actually find a, a little bit more. Um, this is actually the method that's recommended by Unity, not what I was doing previously. What we were doing seemed to work. Um, I just imagine this, since these XR nodes are already tracked by Unity, I imagine this is going to be a little bit faster. Um, so, so there you go. Um, Unity also recommends using a, uh, an error if you get more than one hand. Uh, on either side. For now, I'm going to leave this. That will probably come in later. Um, there's some telemetry that we'll need to get added so that we can actually track errors and more easily debug things um, before this ever gets like released. And so that will probably come in at that point. Uh, but right now, I think we're at a good good stage. So I just figured I, I'd throw that out there and kind of catch that. And everything should still work. Uh, I haven't actually tested this, so <laughs> I'm going to see. But it should it should function just like it was. Uh, we should just get hands now instead of instead of using that other search method. Um, both of them seem to have seem to return the same thing as far as I'm concerned. Um, but I imagine there's maybe some other use cases that might result in extra left-handed devices that could break that other method. Uh, so I'll, I'll throw that out there as sort of an extra add-on thing. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's enough for that. So I will see you in the next video. Bye.